What is up guys? Back again with another Tarrant tip and today's tip is going to be stereo imaging with Ozone and we're going to listen to some of Excision's new album and see where he's putting the frequency bands and where in the stereo field he's putting them so we could get a reference for our music and that is what we will be doing in today's tip. Alright, so these bands that I set up are just the typical bands I use 20 to 200, sometimes 300, sometimes 150, sometimes 100. Again, each song you just got to listen to it and set the band appropriately. It's going to change. The next band I try to do 200 to 500 and what that's going to be is down here. The fullness, mud, knock, honk, the boxy stuff. I try to keep those together in the band. The next band after that, I'll just leave it as it is. It's going to be all of the mids and highs. And we can adjust it. Sometimes I go down to 8K. Sometimes I go up a little bit. But yeah, you could adjust it to whatever you need for your song. So let's get into this album. Shout out Excision and its new album, Virus, that came out at the time of this recording a day ago. I bought it on B-Port, so these are good quality, and yeah, let's take a listen to the drop and then break down each band and see what it's doing. It may get loud, so prepare, guys. Alright, so some heavy in-your-face type stuff. Let's break down each band and see where he's putting the stuff. So the low end, for the most part, everything is going straight down the pipe besides that one element that I'm assuming he purposely did. So everything would be here, then the element comes in and then it goes back, gives him contrast. Then the next band, it's getting wider and a little wider, but take a note to the where it's at on this meter right here as well. That's the lowest it goes. Besides, like, it occasionally it goes down below, but sometimes it just does that when nothing's playing. Um, so, yeah, take note of where that's at, and now we'll go to the next band, which should be wider. much wider some elements are going down below which again is okay as long as the whole song is not doing that and if the whole song is out there going crazy it's going to get really muddy and a bunch of phases phasing is going to happen so make sure you tame elements and unless the ones that are supposed to be wide you can let them out there but make sure everything else is brought in so the wide actually sounds wide and you're not going wider than you need to Okay, so now let's go to the top end. Much lower, you see that? Much wider. So think of it as a pyramid. For the most part, your knobs are going to be like this. This may be pulled in a little bit to tame it. Um, this one may be good. You may have to tame it. You may have to boost it. Most of the time, you're going to be boosting these a little bit just to spread out and let the highs breathe. Because electronic music is pretty crazy. And there's a lot of stuff going in there and a lot of processing and artifacts build up and you just need to get that all spread around so you could hear it and it's not getting muddier and muddier and muddier so that's this song let's go to the next one which is going to be 175 i believe again i just trusted ableton on the warping so it may not be 175 but should sound close enough crazy in your face type song 
Let's break it down. A little wider in the low ends. So this song is pretty wide so far all the bands are wider than the last song so like I was saying it's different every song big wide impacts and then when the driving synths come in they're a little less wide and then he switches it up to that one section which is all pretty wide so just take note of that stuff start playing around with the stereo field and putting elements in different places and creating more contrast with your flows progressions and stuff like that let's go on to the next track this one's a more smoother uh, relaxed track so it's still pretty crazy uh, but yeah, so we should be getting different bands on this one. Oh, and this one's slowed. 135. The low ends are brought in um, pretty tight. So, you know, maybe for that nice, big, wide, chill factor, all those the chill step songs and stuff like that, future bass, get that nice, tight, low line and those big, flowy, wide highs. pretty wide low mids down here the blue band whereas uh i think it was this one or this one the yellow was only going that wide so very different styles for different styles of music how can we be identified <laughs> super wide pushing down to zero down here super wide snare you see every time that snare here would go down which is really not a problem because again when you play it as a whole we're still up here in the positive and we got a nice full spectrum so it gives it that wide sound last song is kind of like an old school style dubstep with samples um animal samples and stuff like that so I thought it would be cool to add this one in as well to check out the spectrum and stuff like that because it has a bunch of different elephant elephants. Yes, it has elephants, uh, but elements in it. Oh, and this one is 150. So low ends, so for the most part it's pretty tight, um, that really wide stuff, you could kind of start hearing the animal noises coming in, so I'm assuming that super wide stuff was that. 
And if you're taking a note right in that middle when the snare is, you can see the snare is pretty tight and all the other stuff are pretty wide. So don't get confused and think everything in this range is super wide. Just take note of what elements are hitting when and how it looks. See that? And you can kind of see it gets a little wide down here. But for the most part, it's hitting straight up when everything else is out here. Super loud. And let's go to the high eyes. So, for me, this was the first time breaking down these songs with the Stereo Imager 2, so I just learned, as you guys learned, and what I got from this was, it's okay to have wide elements down there. Just make sure your bass is hitting straight down the pipe. It could have some width to it. It's okay. Our speakers were in the future now. They could handle that stuff for the most part. Although there are still clubs and some stuff that are strictly mono, so it does not hurt to always check it in mono and make sure nothing's going to you know, disappear or mess up when it goes to mono because that would be pretty embarrassing. A banger, and then all of a sudden you get on the system, and it's like, what happened? <laughs> Half the song disappeared. So, yeah, check that stuff out. I also learned this could be wider than, than I've been doing in my songs. I could push it a little wider. And really, it, it just depends on what elements I'm pushing wider because there's still the snare and stuff that are nice and tight. And I shouldn't have that blended in the, you know, the sides as much as I've been doing. So maybe that's where I'm losing my snare punch because of that. Up here, um, I'm basically spot on in the range, you know, wide but not dipping, even though sometimes it did go past which is uh, something I need to look into and just make sure I'm occasionally dipping over the, the line and not always sitting down here because that could be a problem when flipping back to mono. You want to really make sure you're up in the positives for the most part. And then in the highs, same thing I learned. You really want to push them until you can get them down to around here and it could go past it occasionally and more often than down here but again be aware of it and keep an eye on it and again it's it's like a pyramid it starts in and it goes out so that's the way I'm thinking of it from now on really stack up 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 but you want more stuff in the middle and make sure only what needs to be pushed out wide is pushed out wide so you could really create that contrast from the the wide stuff and the more narrow stuff so that's stereo imaging and just kind of like a this was kind of like an overview breakdown on how to learn from excision and how he uses it and I don't know it was stereo imaging to say the least I hope this has helped you out it certainly has helped me out with visualizing and seeing where elements are and how they're being used in the stereo field and yeah i can't wait to start applying this knowledge to my tracks and i hope you guys do the same for your tracks don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already like this video if this has helped you out in any way and comment down below if you have any questions or anything that we should cover in a future tarrant tip video thanks for watching